Hello everyone. Good morning. Am I audible? Perfect. Okay. So let's start with the session, guys. Uh, let's start with the session, and we'll try to talk about the most important things today. Okay. So what are we going to understand in today's session? Okay. So previously, what did we learn, guys? Previously, in a couple of days here, what did we learn? We understood the various things about the courses offered over here, right? We understood what are the courses offered over here and what are we supposed to do here, right? And we also understood what are the placement aspects in J Spiders over here, okay? And you are going to become software developers over here, okay? You we are going to become what? software developers over here okay now so th this is what we have done from past two three days right we understood what are the courses you're supposed to learn okay and how is the placement going to be carried out and we are all going to become software developers right and the first subject which we are going to start start with is with respect to java okay and what are we going to start with guys we are going to start with java here okay so the first thing that should come to your mind is sir what is java okay as i told you here java is a high level programming language what is it java is a high level programming language okay so yesterday i told you what is high level programming as language as well but since a few of them have joined us today let me brief you about it okay when i talk about high level okay it means a language which is understood by me meaning human being human readable form is called as high level we all know that my system will understand only zeros and ones meaning my operating system can understand only binary language okay that is zeros and ones will i write my java program in zeros and ones will i write 0 1 0 1 Will I write my Java program in zeros and ones? No, we are not writing a Java program in zeros and ones. We are writing it into a language which is easily understood by human beings. Which is easily understood by human beings. That is called as high level. So high level meaning a language which is easily understood by human beings. Okay, that is human understandable form or human readable form. Clear? Done? Great. Then okay, sir. Then what is programming language, sir? Then what is programming language? So, if I want to interact with you, if I want to communicate with you all, I make use of a medium. What is that medium? That medium is a language. That is English. Correct. I am trying to communicate with you all. I am telling something, and you are all listening, right? We make use of a medium. That is language. Which language are we making use of as of now? English, right? similarly i have to tell the system something i have to interact with the system something therefore i have to come across a programming language and in this particular scenario we are making use of java here so what is java java is a high level programming language okay java is a high level programming language here okay got the clarity over here okay na high level meaning it's human understandable form and uh, programming language meaning it's a language that is easily understood by human beings clear everyone here so this is what we are supposed to understand what is java okay na great sir okay sir what are the course content sir okay what are the course content over here sir can you let me know sir 101% yes okay so these are the various courses which we are i mean the concepts which i'll be teaching firstly we will start with variables data types operators we'll understand the structure of java then conditional statements and looping statements okay now so this is with respect to the course content so basic concepts i'm going to do all the topics over here okay i'm going to talk about all the topics over here clear everyone okay so Okay, just a moment. Uh, we have Vignesh uh, HR. Okay, so he's going to announce a few requirements here. Okay, so that if you're all falling into that category, you can register immediately. Okay, uh, Vignesh, go ahead. Uh, you can talk now, Vignesh. Yeah, go ahead, Vignesh.
Can you hear me, Vignesh? Okay. Oh, probably some problem, I believe. Okay, not a problem. Okay, we'll try to connect later. Okay, so this is what I was talking about, guys. Okay, the course content, basic topics I'll cover first. Then we'll get into the core part of Java. That is object, class, keywords, you know, identifiers, method, constructors, block, blah, 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 blah. I'll be covering everything. And then the advanced topics such as Java libraries, object class, string class, exceptions, you know, files, threads, and finally collection. So once I'm done with everything here, okay, I'll also try to do a mini project for you all. Okay, once we are done with this entire data here, I'll do a mini project also once we are done with it so that you'll have the uh, hang of working on Java. Okay, so this is all about the things which I'll be doing with respect to Java guys. Okay, so I spoke about what is Java and I have told you about the course content as well, right? So just read out everything for a couple of minutes. Just read out each and every point here. Okay, understand. Okay, so I hope you know you have uh, understood all this entire process and in order to complete Java, right? I require about 50 to 55 sessions. Okay, so probably, you know, we'll complete it as soon as possible here. Okay, now great guys. Okay, now you understood what is Java. Okay, we understood the various course content which we are going to offer as well. But now there is one more question. Okay, what is that question, sir? Sir, why Java, sir? Okay, why not other languages? Why Java, sir? So we will try to talk about this entire process here. Okay, we will talk about this entire process here. Okay, now, so why Java here? I'll tell you in the most beautiful manner here. Okay. Why Java? Okay, or you can also tell the features. What are the features, sir? wherein I can make use of Java here. So we can understand both the ways. Okay, why Java or what are the future features here? Okay, the first thing which I want to tell here is Java is a very simple language to learn. Okay, it's a very, very simple language to learn. Why sir? Okay, see, you're from IT background or non-IT background. You have basic knowledge about other languages or not. It doesn't matter. From scratch level, we can understand Java. Okay, it's not that you have to, uh, you know, do something in order to understand Java. No, it's very simple. Why? Because we have something called as syntax. Okay, uh, it's a structured language, you know, there is something called a syntax. Syntax is easy. So therefore, learning Java will become very easy. Okay, so it's very simple language to learn because we have something called a syntax, the structure in which we have to write a Java program. So in order to work around with it, it becomes very easy for us. Okay, now it's a simple language because the syntax is very easy. Okay, second point. What is the second point? Okay, second point is, okay, it is platform independent. Okay, platform independent. Sir, what do you mean by platform independent, sir? Okay, I will tell you. I will tell you in the most easiest manner. Okay, now, now you all know C program long, 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 long ago. You heard of something called a C program, no? So now you have written your C program, imagine. Okay, you have written your C program. Okay, this C program, you are executing it on Windows operating system. Imagine, okay, you are executed on which operating system? Windows. So if you have developed a C program on Windows operating system, you can execute it only on Windows. If you want to execute it on Linux, it will give an error. If you want to execute it on Unix, it will give an error. So C program is platform dependent, meaning the C program which I have executed on Windows, I cannot execute it on Linux, Unix or Mac. Why? Because it was platform specific. Okay. Whereas when you talk about Java program, when you talk about Java program, the same Java program, you can execute it on Windows, you can execute it on Linux, you can execute it on Unix, and you can execute it on Macintosh systems as well. You know, you can execute it wherever you want to. 
it is not at all platform dependent it is platform independent so that's one of the major reason why everyone uses java it's platform independent Hey, same Java program execute wherever you want. Okay, now so it doesn't matter at all. Whereas C program was platform specific. C pro, uh, I mean Java program is not specific to the platform. Okay, so this is one another reason why we make use of Java here. Okay, so today it will be a little bit of theory, guys. Okay, you will not have much fun here. Okay, I'm telling it to you, but yeah, you should know it. Okay, it's very, very uh, good going ahead. Okay, in interviews and all, they'll ask small, small, small questions. So it becomes very easy to clear an interview. Okay, third. Okay, sir, what is the third uh, point, sir? I will tell you. The third point is Java is object oriented language. Okay, what is Java? Java is an object oriented language. Sir, what is object oriented language, sir? Everything is all about object and classes. Okay, everything is all about objects and classes. What is object? What is class? You will understand in coming days. Okay, now don't worry about it. You will understand in coming days. What is an object basically, guys? For example, don't you think so? You are an object. I am an object. How? Because I am an object, how? I am present in the real world and I am physically existing as well, right? So I am an object as well. So object meaning anything which is present in the real world and it should have physical existence as well. So we call it as an object here, okay? So these are the few things which we are supposed to understand over here. But we will relate it in the future, okay? Don't worry, we will relate it everything with the future perspective, okay? But it is object oriented. What is object oriented? Later, coming days we will understand. Okay. And the fourth point here is it is an extensible language. Okay. What is it? It is an extensible language. Sir, what do you mean by extensible language, sir? I will tell you one program, guys. Okay. I'll tell you one story. Okay. Now, nah. hey, story meaning don't start dreaming. Okay. Okay. I'm just telling a normal story. Okay. Not a dreaming story and all. Okay. So, what I'm trying to do here is, imagine, one day, what happens, you know, client, you know, who is the client, you know, he will come, okay, and he will give you a project, okay, you are a developer, okay, I'm thinking you're all developers, software developers, software engineers, one fine day, the client comes and he gives a project to you, okay, so now, after a lot of research, Okay, a lot of R&D work, okay, a lot of research here, you come to the conclusion that, okay, this particular project has four modules. How many modules does this project have? It has four modules. Okay, how many modules it has? Four modules. Now, in order to build this all the four modules here, you can build it only with Java only. It is possible to build it only with respect to Java. But what will you do, you know, after a lot of research, you come to the conclusion, okay, okay, if I develop, okay, the first module in Java, it is efficient, second module in C, it is efficient, third module in Python, it is efficient, and the fourth module again in Java, it is efficient. So it means, okay, in order to develop a, a product, in order to develop an application, it's not that you have to use only Java. You can take the help of C, you can take the help of Python, integrate it with Java and develop an application. Okay, and uh, develop an application. Understood, what is extensible meaning? It means in order to develop a product or an application here, it's not that we have to use only Java. I can take the help of C, C++, Python, Angular, anything. I can integrate it with Java and I can develop an application so that it's the best efficient application. So that is what I was trying to tell with the help of extensible clear. And then what is the next point, sir? Okay. The next point is it is robust. What do you mean by robust? Robust in simple English meaning strong. Okay, robust means strong. Okay, so 
you know many many you know the system will not get crashed okay the program will not get crashed it can handle huge huge applications okay it's very very strong here okay and even viruses will not affect that easily for uh, uh, java programs okay because it's much 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 stronger compared to other languages okay it's a robust language it's a strong language okay so you develop an application in java it's strong okay it won't get crashed okay with if you do some uh, huge huge applications will get crashed no but java programs won't get that easily okay it's very strong and then the last point you can make use of anything okay you can have several more points but this is more than sufficient it has automatic okay automatic garbage collector okay java has automatic garbage collector sir what do you mean by java have is having automatic garbage collector sir i'll tell you now in java while working around a java program you would have made use of lot of unused memory correct you would have made use of lot of unused memory so now here all those unused memory will you explicitly delete it no you won't delete it explicitly there is a person called as garbage collector he is automatically going to delete all the unnecessary objects all the unnecessary data it will automatically delete we don't have to delete it explicitly automatically it will delete that's the reason the memory management in java internally is very efficient here okay so these are the few reasons why we use java and again guys okay many 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 applications will make use of java okay billions of application here will make use of java that's the reason we make use of java here okay now it's a very very efficient guys okay so once you start about it you will get to know it okay so these are the various features of java what is it it's simple why we have a syntax we have to just follow the syntax to develop a program so it's easy platform independent we can execute the java programs on all operating system object oriented it is all about objects and classes it is extensible extensible meaning in order to develop a application i can make use of other programming languages integrated with java as well okay robust it's strong okay it's strong java is a strong language okay automatic garbage collector meaning all the unused objects are automatically deleted i don't have to delete it explicitly so these are the various advantages of okay java here got the clarity so just have a look at it guys okay understand each and every point here okay so anyone having any confusions as of now guys uh anyone having any confusions here please do uh, let me know any questions anyone guys if you don't respond it will become very difficult for me okay any questions anyone as of now thank you thank you guys very good okay now guys we understood what is java and why are we using java right now sir uh what kind of applications can i develop sir okay what kind of applications can i develop sir okay i will tell you okay what with the help of java what can i develop here what type of applications can i develop here okay so first one is you can develop web applications okay what kind of applications web applications okay now second you can develop okay business applications as well okay so business applications as well okay so like blogging website okay blogging site e-commerce application like flipkart swiggy you know all those are all business related applications right so we can create the web applications okay business kind of applications and we can also develop mobile applications as well okay we have something called as android over here but yeah it's something similar to java as well as okay so we can develop mobile applications we can develop desktop applications okay so in simple terms guys you learn java you can develop everything we can develop uh, scientific applications as well okay we can develop scientific applications as well so if you learn java here what all the different applications you can work around you can be a web developer okay so wherein you can develop web applications 
बिजनेस रिलेटेड अप्लीकेशन सच एज ओके ब्लॉगिंग वेबसाइट ओके और ई कॉमर्स अप्लीकेशन सच एज दैट मोबाइल अप्लीकेशन द एप्स विच वी हैव डेस्कटॉप अप्लीकेशन लाइक एक्लेप्स यू नो मेनी मेनी विजुअल स्टूडियो दीज आर ऑल डेस्कटॉप अप्लीकेशन साइंटिफिक ओके साइंटिफिक रिलेटेड अप्लीकेशन ऑल्सो वी कैन क्रिएट इट ओके सो इट्स एवरीवेयर गाइज ओके दर इज नो प्रॉब्लम दट ऑल नाउ विच आर द कंपनी सर विच आर द कंपनीज हियर ओके uh this is like what can we do with the help of java where can we use it so i have told you everything okay the application way with the help of java what we can do and now which are the few companies sir which will make use of java okay i'll tell you here you know a company called as uber okay car i mean uh, taxi company here we just generally call it here uber ola right uber makes use of uh, java okay you talk about instagram instagram makes use of java okay Instagram makes use of Java here. We have something called as uh, Spotify, okay? So it makes use of Java here, okay? And many, 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 many companies, from the big, big, big top MNC companies till 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 the small startup companies, okay? Everywhere you learn Java, okay? Because it's one of the most popular languages we have it in uh, India, guys. Okay, especially in India here, Java is a very, very popular language. okay so this is how we are supposed to understand what uh, is java the course content why java where which everywhere everything we have understood in a beautiful manner correct so this is what i just wanted to inform with respect to today's session because we are just kick starting with the basic concepts right done so we are done with the most important part okay now clear everyone here okay so now here i'll tell you okay i'll tell you one more part guys if you talk about the basic history you know if you talk about the basic history it has a very very good history okay it is related to something called as world war and all okay now java was developed during world war 2 and all but i'll talk about one thing okay now one question is come java was introduced by a company okay java was started by a company okay now which company started java any idea which company started java guys java is a programming language and it was started by a company okay which company started java any idea and who owns it currently who owns it presently there is one more company okay any idea guys which company started java can you think and tell me java background people csis okay do you know which company started java there was a company by the name called as sun microsystems okay there is a company called as sun microsystems this was the company which started java okay but it is currently owned by one of the most popular uh, database company that is oracle okay oracle owns it now very good guys very good very good okay i got the answer okay java was started by sun microsystems okay na but they sold it later okay they sold to a very huge database company and what is that company name oracle here oracle is the company who owns java okay right now who are the owners of java oracle and if you get a job in oracle you know it's a very very you know good position for you all if you get a job okay and then there should be a person no who started java and the person name is called as james gosling okay this was the person who started the language called as java very very famous language what is that language name uh, java who started it james gosling i talk about 2 minutes okay not more i don't like history only they don't ask in the interviews and all but you should know the basic things i'm not talking in detail just the basic overview okay na now guys in uh, late 19 uh, i mean uh, 1980s and early 1990s here james gosling developed a language okay he developed a language okay he wanted to give some name so what he did he gave the first name called as green talk okay he gave the name called as what green talk here so once james gosling and his team developed a language they wanted to give some name so they gave the name called as green talk but green top is not that catchy name no it become it didn't become that famous then later he named the language which he developed called as oak because he had a oak tree beside his office so he gave the name as oak okay na but 
Oak was already registered by some other company. Okay, there was a company called as Oak. I mean, the, the previously company, you know, they had registered called as Oak here. Okay, so he couldn't give it. Then after a lot of thinking, you know, finally he gave the name called as Java. Why? Because Java is a coffee shop. Okay, actually speaking, Java is a coffee shop. Okay, and James Gosling and his team used to hang out in a place and that place is called as uh, Java coffee shop. So that is what he dedicated the name called as Java only. See, if you could closely Google it over here, see, if you could Google it over here, I'll show it to you. See, what is that here? I'll tell Java logo. Okay, Java logo over here. So when you just search for Java logo here, just look at the Java logo here. Can you see? It's the cup and saucer. Okay, it's the cup and saucer here okay so that is what we are supposed to understand here okay so finally he gave the name called as java that is uh, based on the coffee shop that's the reason he gave the logo as cup and saucer because he dedicated the name for java only got the clarity guys so this is all about what i wanted to explain here got it so this is all about the basic things here guys okay so now which company started java sun microsystems who owns it right now? Oracle. Which person started Java? James Gosling. Okay, now what were the previous names of Java? Green Talk, then Oak, and finally came the name called as Java, and it became most popular here. It became very popular here. Okay, now this is the basic history about Java, and we spoke about what kind of applications can be created web, mobile, desktop, scientific, business related, all the types of applications we can create. And which all companies will make use of Java, Uber, uh, Instagram, Spotify, you know, Pinned Interest, you know, many, many, many companies here, you know, we can make use of Java everywhere. If you want, you can surf over the net here. Okay, you'll get it. Okay. And then we also understand, we also understood why do we require Java? Is it that famous? Yes, very famous. And we also understood what is Java here. Okay. We are done with the basic things, guys. Okay, whatever you require as a pressure, I'm done. So the last concept which I'll be doing for the day is very, very important. That is, how does a Java program works? This is one of the most important interview question as well. Okay, how is a Java program going to work? So now let us see that in a small uh, process. Okay, now. Concentrate for the next 10 15 minutes. I want your complete concentration so that we can understand this topic in the utmost clarity. Okay, now done. So, what am I going to teach her? So, I will tell you. Okay, now first rule what will you do, sir? What will you do, sir? Okay, first thing what I'll do here is I will develop a Java program. What will I do? I will develop a Java program. Okay, great. So first thing, what did you do, sir? You are developing your Java program. I'm telling you the working of a Java program, guys. Okay, now this Java program you will develop. This Java program can also be called as source code. Source code because you are trying to develop it. Okay, so Java program or source code. Okay, so you have developed the Java program here. In which language? In high level language. In high level language. That is human understandable form. Okay, now. So what is rule number one? Sir, we developed a programming language. We developed. I developed Java. And then I have to save it. Okay, now. While saving the Java language. Okay. I have to save it with the extension. Any idea? What is the extension of all Java program? Okay, see guys. If it is a text file, what is the extension of text file? TXT, right? Uh, if it's a word file, MS Word file, it's DOC, doc or docs, right? Uh, if it's an executable file, .exe. And what is the extension of all Java programs? Very good. Okay, it is .java. Perfect, guys. Very good. Okay, it's .java. And the file name can be anything. I'll just give it as demo. So what did you do? You developed your Java program and you saved it with the extension .java. Okay, now first step done. After you're done, okay, after you're done with it, what are we supposed to do? We are supposed to compile my Java program. After that, what is the step here? We have to 
compile my java program i compilation will take place why do we require compilation sir sir because the java program is written by human beings you and me correct it's human tendency to make some mistakes so i need to check oh is there any program errors or not in my program so i have to compile okay i need to compile my java program okay na step number 2 what is step number 2 i have to compile my java program okay if the compilation is unsuccessful there are two ways what can happen compilation might be successful meaning no errors compilation might be unsuccessful meaning there are some errors in my java program correct no there are two possibilities compilation successful no errors compilation unsuccessful there are errors positive scenario negative scenario true scenario false scenario okay so the next step is compilation okay now when i try to compile it imagine compilation is false okay there are some some problem here there is some problem here therefore what will happen here error report will get generated what will happen if the compilation is unsuccessful if the compilation is unsuccessful error report will get generated okay now wait i'll write it down it is false negative scenario if it is false what will happen error report will get generated this error report has the complete information about the error okay what is the error why did it occur and what am i supposed to do in order to overcome it you know every information is there in that error report so based on that error report i have to go back to my program i have to go back to my program in my program what am i supposed to do in my program i am supposed to debug okay i have to go back to my program and i am supposed to debug sir what is debugging sir see once my program is having certain errors as a software engineer as a software developer i need to rectify those mistakes correct those mistakes and that process in programming we call it as debugging okay what do we call it as debugging again i compile again if there is error error report will get generated debug this process will be carried out okay this process will keep on carried out until it is successful once the compilation is successful what will happen here once the compilation is successful there is something called as error i mean there is something called as byte code which will get generated what will get generated the byte code will get generated this byte code is an intermediate code okay it's an intermediate code here what do you mean by intermediate i will tell you sir you are writing your java program in high level language okay and my machines will understand only binary language zeros and ones but intermediate code meaning it's neither human understandable nor machine understandable it's somewhere in between okay and the extension of all byte codes is nothing but dot class here what is the extension of all byte codes it is dot class and the file name will be same it will be demo only okay na got the clarity first half okay what will happen over here guys it's very simple see here i'll tell you first i develop my java program and i save it with the extension dot java okay na after that i need to compile after that i need to compile if the compilation is unsuccessful meaning it is negative scenario false scenario what will happen here error report will get generated okay what will happen error report will get generated this error report will have the complete information about the error a hey, why is it occurring so it will tell a hey, a programmer programmer see here you have made that mistake so what am i supposed to do i have to go back to my java program and debug what do we call it as debugging debugging meaning rectifying again i compile again problem error report debug so we have to keep on doing it okay we have to keep on repeating the process until it is successful my final goal is no errors okay once the compilation is successful true positive scenario no errors byte code will get generated this byte code is an intermediate code it's neither human understandable nor machine understandable it's somewhere in between and what is the extension of all byte code dot class so if the 
uh, I mean, um, if the compilation is successful, bytecode will get generated. Okay, now, now what am I supposed to do here? After I get the bytecode, I have to interpret it. What am I supposed to do? I have to interpret it. Where will I interpret it? On the operating systems here. So let me do this. Okay. We have uh, Windows, we have Linux, we have Unix, and we have Macintosh. Okay, now. So what am I trying to do here? I will tell you now. Okay, this bytecode can be executed on all operating system. I can execute it on Windows, I can execute it on Linux, and I can execute it on Macintosh system, or I can execute it on Unix system. I can execute it wherever I want to. Okay, now, but I will tell you here. I can execute it on Windows also. I can execute it on uh, Linux also. Okay, Linux also I can execute. I can execute it on Mac also. And I can execute it on Unix also. But, but there is one small problem. Sir, what problem, sir? My systems, my operating systems will always understand only zeros and ones. That is machine level language. But bytecode, you know, bytecode is an intermediate code. So it cannot be directly understood in the operating system, right? So there is a person called as JVM. Who is that person name? That person name is called as JVM. This JVM is present. Oh, just a moment. I'll increase the font size a little bit. There is a person called as JVM. Who is that person? JVM. Okay. Any idea? What does this JVM stands for? Abbreviation of JVM. Okay. This is nothing but JVM. Every operating system will have someone called as JVM with him. Okay. And JVM stands for, okay, JVM stands for, uh, wait, JVM stands for Java Virtual Machine. Okay, JVM stands for Java Virtual Machine. What he does, what he does, okay, I will tell you. First, JVM will read the bytecode. Okay, he will read the bytecode. And then he will interpret. Okay, he will interpret it to machine level language. First, JVM will read the bytecode, convert it to machine level language, and he is going to execute it line by line. Okay, he is going to execute it line by line. So that is the job of JVM. So the first half is compilation. And the second half is interpretation. First half compilation, second half interpretation. So this is what we are supposed to understand when it comes to the Java part. Clear everyone with the process guys? This is all about it. Okay. Once the compilation is successful, bytecode will get generated. You have to interpret it. Okay. And if it is having error report, you need to debug. So this is how the Java program is going to work like. But there is one small part. This bytecode is platform independent. Okay, it is independent of the platform. That is the reason you are able to execute it on all operating system. But JVM is platform specific. When I tell platform specific, JVM for Mac, Unix cannot be used for Mac. JVM for Mac cannot be used for Linux. JVM for Linux cannot be used for Windows. So bytecode is platform independent, but JVM is platform specific. So this is how a Java program is going to work like. So in an interview, okay, in an interview, they might ask you three questions, okay? First question is, can you explain, okay, the working of a Java program? So the first question they'll ask, can you explain the working of a Java program? The same thing you need to explain. Or they might ask you, can you prove how Java is platform independent? Okay. They'll ask you, what is the working of a Java program? Or prove how is Java platform independent? Or they might ask you to explain what is Aura architecture? 
W O R A and ORA stands for write once, write once, run anywhere. Okay, it stands for what? Write once, run anywhere. You write your Java program only once, but you can execute it anywhere. So that is nothing but ORA. ORA means write once, run anywhere. You write your Java program only once but we can execute it everywhere. That is the meaning of ORA. So all the three questions will have same answer. Okay, you are supposed to answer the same way. Clear everyone with the process here? Everyone understood what we are trying to do here? Can we have a brief, basic revision quickly? Quickly, will shall we have a revision? Yes, okay now, let's start. Sir, okay, everyone, okay, stop thinking about your girlfriend, boyfriend. Okay, everything will stop. And we'll try to start about this entire data. Okay, now great. So stop everything. Okay, stop thinking everything. Two minutes. Okay, stop thinking about everything. Okay, your college, your memories, your engineering days, your exams. Okay, forget everything. Okay, now we'll just concentrate for one moment. Rule number one: You will develop your Java program. Okay, and you will save it with the extension .java. After that, you need to compile. So the compilation might be successful no errors okay true scenario positive scenario or the compilation might be unsuccessful false scenario negative scenario meaning there are some errors if it is false error report will get generated based on the error report i need to debug debug means rectify those mistakes correct those mistakes i keep on repeating it a compile error report debug compile error report debug i keep on looping repeating 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 until when until it is successful once the compilation is successful, no errors, byte code will get generated. It's an intermediate code. Okay. And that byte code extension is dot class. And it is platform independent. That's the reason we are able to execute it everywhere. So this byte code can be executed on all operating systems. But my operating systems will understand only zeros and ones. No. But here, you know, my byte code is an intermediate code. So what am I supposed to do? There is a person. Who is that person name? JVM, Java Virtual Machine. He is he platform independent. Yes, he is dependent specific. What he will do? He will read the byte code, interpret it to machine level, and he will execute it line by line, line by line, line by line. I repeat, he will read. Okay, he'll take the byte code. Okay, now nah. he will convert it to machine level, and he will execute it line by line, line by line, line by line, and that process is called as interpretation. This is how a Java program works and JVM stands for Java Virtual Machine. He will read, he will interpret and he will execute it line by line, line by line, line by line. So all the three questions, okay, working platform independent ORA architecture will have the same answer, okay. So this is how a Java program is going to work like. Got the clarity guys, okay. Anyone having any confusions? Do you want me to repeat the topic? Any confusions anyone? Please reply. Any confusion? Very good. Appreciate it here. Okay. Yeah. So what have we done in today's session? Okay. What have we done in today's session? So I'll just give, give you the basic overview. Okay, now, so here first, all we spoke about was with respect to Java. Okay, whatever I did now, it was completely keeping in consideration about Java here. Okay, now, so the first thing which we understood was, we understood what is Java. Correct? We understood what is Java. Then we understood the course content. Okay. What are the topics and the concepts which I will be talking about? Okay. And we understood where, okay, where we use Java. Okay. Which all applications we use Java. Okay. On which all complicate, uh, I mean, companies make use of Java and why Java. Okay. And how does a Java program works? So everything with respect to Java here, we have understood. What is Java? The course contents which come, I mean, where we do we use Java? Okay, what is the usage of Java? Okay, which companies will make use of Java? Why Java? How does Java program works? And we have also spoke about the basic history also. 
so this is what i have done in today's session okay and it's important for you all to understand it clearly don't don't try to uh, screw up okay it's very very easy process okay now try to understand it easily okay now this is all about the basic things okay we had uh, three days of only demo sessions okay wherein i spoke about the courses placements interview procedure hr counselors everything okay and today one session we have done with we have kick started with java here this is all about it okay now guys again the fee structure is very very important here okay because as i told you here i know it's very very difficult situation for us right for you as well as us okay due to this covid 19 situation right so we have to come up with some solution guys we don't have a choice right so therefore you okay, can okay try to pay the fees as soon as possible here i hope i have explained it to you right so the exact fee is 32950 okay if you're trying to pay it in installments here you have to pay 18000 for the first time first installment and 14950 in the second installment so you have to pay completely no discount plus you have to pay 1850 for aptitude separately okay but if you pay it together together here in a single shot payment here you have to do it as round figure 25000 okay round figure 25000 see if you pay it in installments you have to pay 18000 first and 14950 later so it's like very you know very huge amount but if you pay it in a single shot payment here we are giving you discount here probably if you arrange again 7000 you'll be done here okay this is without aptitude plus with aptitude you have to pay 26500 so this is with aptitude okay aptitude separately it's 1080 850 but if you pay it with aptitude it's 2650 without aptitude it is 25000 okay so in the group here we would drop you the you know details okay we would drop you the details about okay how do we pay the fee, uh, fees here okay we would drop you the details okay once you pay the fees okay once you're done paying the fees take down the screenshot of the payment summary okay once you're done paying the fees take down the screenshot of the payment summary and send it to chaitra okay chaitra is our manager okay so who is going to take care of all the uh, things over here so you can take the screenshot and send it to chaitra so later chaitra will uh, take care of the fee receipt and forward it to you okay so there's no issues here okay so first i'll send you the details how to pay the ma make the payment once you're done take down the screenshot of the payment summary lastly okay and send it to whatsapp to chaitra so she'll say she'll be sending you the fee receipt at end of the session here i mean at, at the end as soon as possible she'll be sending it to you okay and yesterday guys uh, we had a couple of interviews here which happened okay we had about four requirements here If you want me to talk about the company names, I'll tell it to you. We had four requirements, four interviews yesterday. So just a moment, I'll just read out it. What are the company names here? Because criteria, I'll tell you later. Okay, because you all won't be eligible as of now. So I'll tell you. So the first company which came was Quinox. Okay, heard of Quinox? Quinox is the company which came yesterday. Okay, and there was one more company called as Bluebird. Okay, and that was for that data. Okay. So this is for 2020 pass out both, okay. Uh, and next was Vision Technologies, okay. Vision Technologies we had it, okay. And we had Eurofins, okay. Eurofins, you know how much they are offering? They are offering four lakhs per annum, okay. Four LPA, very good, good companies guys. Vision is six LPA, okay. Oh my God, they are offering good. And Bluebird is 2.4. and quinox is they haven't revealed it yet okay so these were the four companies which came yesterday okay and i'll be announcing it daily and these are all for java completed okay core java completed if you are done with java or long back you would be eligible but a few companies will come okay wherein they'll ask for pursuing candidates we want java students who know basic knowledge is also fine why because they'll train you later okay they'll train you in those 3 months of training period no they're going to train you So there are two types of companies they'll come. They'll ask for pursuing completed. So if it is pursuing, you're all eligible for it, and the percentages also will matter. Okay, so I've spoken about everything. I believe, guys. Do you all have any confusion? Do you want me to speak about anything else, guys? Please do let me know. We have how many candidates over here? Let me 
tell out the names akshay darshini femina uh, alidia uh, mubara and pooja pratiba pratyusha usha and vinayak okay so we have these many candidates do you all have any doubts here okay so there is one question sir uh, if i join python full stack okay will i be uh, will i be able to attend java interviews your answer is no okay the reason is because uh, python meaning you'll be attending the requirements which is on only python but if you have java knowledge okay if you have java knowledge we will take mock once okay we will take your mock and if you are performing well yes definitely we will let you to attend java interviews as well but generally if you are doing with the python full stack or java full stack here so you can attend each other okay you can attend python interviews also but you should have knowledge on that particular subject okay so you if you are pursuing python full stack and if you want if you have java knowledge we will take mock once you perform well in the mock here we will be projecting you for the interviews okay so if you are good then absolutely yes okay not a problem okay it's not that you have to attend only java nothing if you are good definitely you can uh, uh, attend here okay so this is all about the session guys we have done with the introduction to java today okay tomorrow i would be talking about variables okay tomorrow's topic variables data types and let us understand how do we write java program and execute them okay how do we develop java program and execute them okay na so these topics i'll be covering tomorrow that is variables data types and how do we develop a java program and execute it okay and you can refer the link guys which i have sent it to you okay if you you can refer the link you will have the videos you will have the images you will have the notes everything would be present in that link so keep referring that link for anything and if you want us to you know if you want to communicate with us if you want to talk to us here you can reach out to the counselors or me anything is fine okay so we have two counselors a manager come counselor chaitra and bindu you can reach to reach out to them or you can reach out to me or keshav sir anyone for that matter okay everyone would be you know they would help you out okay so great guys okay so we're done with the session for today okay so if at all you have any questions you can let me know okay so great guys okay so we shall wind up a session for today and catch up tomorrow okay so thank you all take care bye bye have a nice day